grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. In the gospel you heard a moment ago, a man is at odds with his brother about an inheritance settlement. He comes to Jesus hoping for a solution to his problem. But Jesus does not give him a satisfying answer. Instead, he tells a parable about a rich farmer who is blessed with larger crops than he can keep in storage. So he decides to build a bigger barn. Nothing unusual about that. We know people like that farmer. We may even see a bit of ourselves in him. We admire people who work hard and plan for the future. Yet that very night, the farmer dies. And the shocker in the parable is that God calls him a fool. Because in his case, he foolishly thought he was in full control of his destiny. Not so. His many years of hard work are destroyed, as we might say, by his untimely death. It's not a happy story, nor an uncommon one. The author of this morning's first lesson from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes wrestles with the kind of unexplainable events in life that are described in Jesus' parable. The Hebrew word Ecclesiastes means preacher or sage or wise one. Ecclesiastes is an elder statesman who comments on human affairs. This elder statesman has tried everything in his lifelong search for happiness and contentment. He has acquired wealth and been able to gratify his every desire. He has immersed himself in a search for the answers to the mysteries of life, but his quest has ended in frustration. And all of this sounds vaguely familiar to us. Each of you here this morning could cite examples of life's unexplainable mysteries from your own experience or the experience of someone you know. Here's a husband who works hard and builds up an estate. But then after he dies, his estate is eaten up by state and federal taxes or squandered by his ungrateful children. Here's a married couple who set money aside for their two children's education, only to see one of the children die in an auto accident at the age of 17, and the other wanting nothing whatever to do with any college education. Here's a single woman who lives frugally in order to be assured of financial security in her later years but cancer infects her body at the age of 47, ruining her hopes for her future. Finally, there is the specter of death, which will claim us all. True, in some cases, death is welcome, even prayed for. But when death comes prematurely, at least prematurely from our human perspective, it seems to make a mockery of our belief that God loves us and that He wants always for us what is in our best interest. Having pondered mysteries like these, Ecclesiastes' advice to us is this. Stop. Stop trying to control every aspect of your destiny. Stop asking God to explain everything to you to your satisfaction. Instead, accept the good things He blesses you with and leave everything else up to His divine wisdom. He does not allow any of us to have the last word in the management of our affairs. That last word He reserves for Himself. Our best made plans may fall through, through no fault of our own. And in the end, because of our sin, Death will snatch us all. But thanks be to God for us whom Christ Jesus has redeemed through His death and resurrection. In the hour of our death, each of us will be falling for all eternity into the hands of our grace-filled Heavenly Father. So, says our wise friend Ecclesiastes, 
do continue with your financial planning. But as you do, remember that you're never alone. You're being held always in God's gracious hand. The old African-American spiritual has it right. He's got the whole world in his hands. And if Ecclesiastes were living today and knew as we do that God demonstrated his love for us supremely in sending Jesus to be our Savior, he might also remind us, as does the Apostle James, that every good and perfect gift that comes down to us is from above. So to sum up, Based on the advice of Ecclesiastes, let's be grateful for all the good days and times God gives us. And even more important, let's rejoice that our names are written in the book of heaven. Let's enjoy life to the fullest. Let's eat our bread with enjoyment and drink our wine with merry heart, assured that God approves of what we're doing. Lest you think those are my words, Let me tell you, they are a direct quote from Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 7. But lest you misunderstand, the author of Ecclesiastes is not saying that whatever will be, will be. Rather, he's saying that whatever God wills and permits is what will be. And as his redeemed people we say that's okay with us. We trust Him when He promises that He loves us, even in those moments when it may seem to us that He does not. And we take Him at His word that He will never permit anything to separate us from His love. We trust Him when He tells us that for Jesus' sake, in the hour of our death, He will receive us into His nearer presence in heaven, where, among other things, we'll have no more questions to ask of Him, but simply be ready and willing and happy at all times to do His will. We are joyful Christians who recognize the blessings God gives as having come from Him. We plan responsively for the future, even as we recognize that God holds all the trump cards because He is God and that He is entitled to use all the cards as He thinks best. Above all, we are grateful for God's grace and mercy in Jesus Christ and we trust without asking Him for any proofs or miracles that He can and will bring ultimate good out of all that happens to us who love Him. If not always in this life, then for certain in the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of God which passes all our understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.